the son didn't say anything. For all the father knew, the son could have been coming back demanding more money. It says the father fell on his neck before he said anything. And then when he tried to say something, the father shut it up. That's right. <laughs> so, and like Maurice just succinctly pointed out, believing that it's better for the servants in the father's house than it is for him outside, that's not repentance. No. So repentance in the story would have happened when he let the father put the ring on his finger. When he let the father put the best coat on him. When he let the father prepare a feast for him. That was when the repentance happened. And how did that repentance happen? By him seeing the father's goodness towards him. Right. And if it, you have to understand the story in the Jewish context. Pigs are like unclean to Jews. They're the filthiest thing in the whole universe to Jewish people. You couldn't even have pigs. Right? It wasn't even allowed for you to have pigs on your farm. That's how filthy they were. Well, the story makes a point to say that this guy was in a pig pen eating pig slop. There's a reason why he's using the pig language it yeah. me when Jesus is telling the story. It means something to Jews. Mm -hmm. Jesus is trying to describe the most filthy, vile sinner they could possibly imagine. The kingdom of God is like a father, is what it starts. He's explaining to them the kingdom of God. So he takes what the Jews would think is the most disgusting thing that could ever exist in God's eyes. There's no showers there. Right? right? Yeah. It's not like along the way, this guy took a shower. Right. <laughs> so here's a guy been living with pigs, eating, eating pig slop, and then now travels however far home to get home to dad. You know what he smelled like pigs. when dad come upon him? Do you know what he looked like? And do you know it makes a point to say the father ran out to meet him and fell on his neck. The and, father fell on his neck. And the running thing. And the running thing. Yeah. Jewish men don't run. No. There's no running. <laughs> and so he fell on his neck in that state. Right? right? And then put the ring on him. That's the ring signifying sonship. Yeah. Bring out the best coat. Yeah. Kill the fatted calf. Right? So That's what did he see him? He saw son, his son? Yes, he so, saw his son. Well, For my son has come home. Yes. Right. But the thing, the thing that, uh, it's like the key puzzle piece in the puzzle or, or the, the, the essential part that puts it all together, not just the prodigal son, but everything we've talked about, is knowing and understanding the heart of the father towards us. Yeah. The story is really the story of the good father. Yeah. Yeah. We ought to not describe it the prodigal son. No. It ought to be the story of the good father. That's what, we, that's, what, <laughs> that's what Jesus is trying to depict there. Yeah. The goodness of the father. That's the ministry of Jesus was to reveal the goodness of the father. That's how the, car, the carnal mind entitles that. Yeah. Right. Time, we make the story mind, about the son. It's about the son. Yeah. Right. What he did and how he repented. No, it's about the goodness of the father. Because what was the problem? We couldn't see the beauty God saw in us. Right. So we didn't think he would save us. Right. We yeah. thought we had to save ourselves and then we could be acceptable yeah. to him. So we couldn't trust him with our lives. We couldn't call upon his name. So God had to come and reveal his goodness to people dead in sin. So that we could have a change of mind yes. about the integrity or the equity of this guy's character. Because when we could see there's no shadow of turning in his goodness, even towards sinners, we're going to find a new song in our hearts. You know what song we're going to find in our hearts? Abba. Do you know what song it's going to change from? You know what the song was in our hearts? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That was the song in our hearts. <coughs> But now we see the goodness of God in towards us, even when we were sinners, that he never forsook us. He never turned his back on us. He never left us as orphans, that he was always pursuing us. And now we have a new song, Abba. Yeah. What was the song that came out of Jesus' heart at the end on the cross? Into your hands I commit my life. Mm. Abba. Into your hands I commit my life. What was the first song? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Both those are songs. So where did they sing, find me someone to love? <laughs> in the garden. <laughs> in the garden. And so that's what, the, that's what the psalmist is talking about in Psalm 40, because Psalm 40 is after Psalm 22. Yeah. Right. Those would both be songs. Right. There's a new song in Jesus' heart, which is what? Man, God is so good that when I was dead in the grave and I was in the miry clay, he came and lifted me out. Yeah. He's got a new song, right? Yeah. And that's so for all of us. 
so we could see. Mm. And then that changes everything, you think. I mean, the word sin means to miss the mark. Right. Well, what was God's mark for our life? To be with to, to, live to live and not die. Yes. To be able to pour his life out for us every day. To be able to show us his love for us every day. Isn't that what parents do with their kids? Yes. They pour themselves out for their kids. That was the mark God had for our life. That we could live eternally and not die. And we could experience his love for all eternity. Mm -hmm. Well, we missed that mark because we were dying. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so in order, what God wanted to do when he thinks of our sin is just that he wants to redeem us from death. Because he doesn't want us to die. Even when God gave the law. What did Moses tell the Israelites? And they were all freaked out about all these laws and all this stuff. What did Moses say? Fear not. Don't be afraid, man. God's not trying to get you to do these things to give yourself life. He's come to prove you. He's come to purge your heart from the belief that you have to gain life and be justified by your own works. Yes. In order that you sin not. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you don't, don't miss, miss the, the mark. mark of his glory and his eternal life. Right. He doesn't want you to die, but you've now taken on a wisdom that seems right to you, but the end of that wisdom is death. And so God has given you this law, not to get you to work more, but to come and show you that trusting in your works is killing you. And he's going to send or provide himself as the sacrifice to take your death into himself, and then he's going to promise you glory and immortality free from your works. Amen. To purge your heart from trying to give yourself life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that you don't miss the mark. Right. Right? 